So now you know about the bonding and properties of two different kinds of solid, what about the other two? We now come to the third kind of bonds, which are the ones we find in ordinary metals. We're going to use good old copper, Cu, as our example in this section. Metallic bonds are very interesting things, but then so are metals. In a sheet of copper metal, we see some copper atoms that are surrounded by lots and lots of valence electrons. These valence electrons are called delocalized electrons, and they're called this because they're essentially free to move around the metal as they please. Sometimes we say that the metal atoms are cations surrounded by a sea of electrons. So our copper sheet might look like this. The specific definition of the metal bonds in a metal like copper is the attraction between the delocalized valence electrons and the nuclei of neighboring metal atoms. That means these carefree electrons you can see here are attached to the positive nuclei of the nearest copper atoms, and that attraction right there is what a metallic bond is. Let's take a look at the features of metals and metallic bonds. Copper has a high melting and boiling point. Have you ever seen a molten metal? If you have, it would have only been in an industrial situation, because only in special factories can we get even close to breaking these powerful metallic bonds. The melting point of copper is about 1084 degrees Celsius. The exceptions to this are mercury and gallium, metal solids or liquids which have unusually low melting and boiling points. Copper is malleable and ductile. These are two special words you'll need to know. Metals are malleable because they can be bent. Remember the last section on ionic solids not being malleable? Metals are ductile because they can be drawn out into thin strands. Both of these properties are because of the fact that these metallic bonds are not in any particular direction. You need to mention that. And so the copper atoms can be pushed past each other without any repulsion. Copper conducts electricity in solid and molten states. Because these electrons are delocalized, they're always free to move about the metal. And so they can carry electricity regardless of whether the copper is in a solid or molten state. Copper is not soluble in water. Because the copper atoms in the metal have no charge, there's no attraction to the positive or the negative parts of the water molecules. And so there's no chance of a hunk of any metal dissolving in water.